Here we're gonna look at an interesting example of a function that gives an example of some sort of discontinuity that you learn about in Calculus 1, but you often learn about it with these kind of made up functions or piecewise functions or so on and so forth. So this is maybe like a nice natural example of this type of discontinuity. And so let's look at what we've got. We've got the function f from r minus zero. In other words, that's all real numbers except for zero to r, and it's defined by f of x equals e to the one over x plus over one plus e to the one over x. So notice that's most definitely not defined at zero. If we plug in zero, we get e to the one over zero, but that doesn't really make any sense. Now, you might think that we could redefine this so that it has a value at zero by looking at its limit. So let's see if that's possible. We'll calculate the right-handed limit as x approaches zero and the left-handed limit as x approaches zero and see what happens. Okay, so let's go with this right-handed limit first. So we've got the limit as x goes to zero from above of f of x like that. So first off, what I want to do is do a bit of a change of variables that simplifies this. So let's maybe go ahead and let u equal 1 over x. And notice, as x goes to 0 from the right, u is going to plus infinity. That's actually going to make this a little bit easier to calculate. So that means we can rewrite this as the limit as u goes to positive infinity of f of 1 over u. Because if u is 1 over x, then, f, then x is 1 over u like that. Okay, nice. Now let's go ahead and plug that into the function as defined here and see what we get. So this is going to be the limit as u goes to positive infinity of e to the u over 1 plus e to the u. Now, I want to notice that this is an indeterminate form. If u is approaching positive infinity, this looks like infinity over infinity. So there are obviously a bunch of ways that you could solve this from this point. You could use L'Hopital's rule, but maybe what I want to do is a little simpler. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by e to the minus u. So let's see what that gives us. So in the numerator, that gives us just the number 1 given the fact that e to the zero is one, and in the denominator, we have e to the minus u plus one. Now, as u approaches plus infinity, minus u approaches negative infinity, which makes e to the minus u approach zero. So we've got this guy right here is zooming off towards zero, giving us this limit here is one over one, which is one. So we've got the value of this right-handed limit at zero is one. Now we're ready to calculate the value of this left-handed limit at zero. So in other words, the limit as x approaches zero from below. So we're gonna do the same kind of setup where we do a change of variables, and we'll do exactly the same change of variables. We'll let x equal one over u, but in this case, if x is approaching zero from below, that makes u approach negative infinity. So that's pretty easy to see. Now we can change this from an x limit to a u limit. We've got the limit as u goes to negative infinity of f of 1 over u, like that. Then we can plug 1 over u into our function as defined over here. That gives us the limit as u goes to minus infinity of e to the u over 1 plus e to the u. But in this case, this is not an indeterminate form. As u approaches minus infinity, e to the u approaches 0. So we've got this object is approaching 0, this object is approaching 0, but the 1 is a constant. It's just staying 1. So we end up with 0 over 1, or in other words, we end up with 0. So here for this left-handed limit, we have 0. So that means we've got a jump discontinuity at x equals 0. And I think that's pretty interesting because generally when you give examples of jump discontinuities in a first semester calculus class, you generally have to construct them via piecewise functions. And so this is one that like appears in nature. So if you guys know any others that quote unquote appear in nature, maybe post them in the comments.
Okay, for the rest of the video, we're gonna look at the limits as x goes to plus and minus infinity of this function, just to get a good idea of what the entire picture looks like. So let's look at this limit as x goes to plus infinity of f of x. Now, we're actually gonna do essentially the same thing that we did here with a change of variables. It's just gonna change it from x going to plus infinity to u going to zero from above. So let's make that substitution, x equals one over u. If x is going to plus infinity, u is going to zero from above. So that's gonna give us this limit as u goes to zero from above. And I'll go ahead and plug it in to kind of skip a step. This gives us e to the u over one plus e to the u, like that. But now the exponential function is continuous at zero. So what that means is that the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit there are the same. But that's actually really good news because that means that we can do this positive and negative infinity limit at the same time. If we just, again, notice that each one-sided limit is gonna be equal to the two-sided limit, which is just equal to plugging the function in, again, because that function is continuous at zero. So we have e to the zero is one, which that means this leaves us with one over one plus one or one half. So in other words, we've got a one half here and a one half here. So that tells us that we have a horizontal asymptote at one half. Okay, so now we have the data for almost all of the interesting parts of this function. We see that we have a jump discontinuity at x equals zero, and then we see we have this horizontal asymptote in both directions at y equals half. So now we can go ahead and sketch a graph of this, and it's actually not too tricky. So let's maybe give ourselves an xy plane like that. Notice that y equals half is gonna be pretty important, so I'll maybe put y equals one half right here. Let's point out that this is at a half, and then maybe up here, this is gonna be at one. Now we can draw our graph in. So if we're coming from the right, this function is at one, so that means we have like an open circle here, and then, it dies off down here to this horizontal asymptote. And then if you come in from the left, you're going towards zero, which is the origin. And then it dies off here, which is a horizontal asymptote. Now you might look at this and say, well, how do we know that it approaches like along what looks to be something getting close to a maybe horizontal tangent here? And you would actually have to check that by looking at the derivative and seeing that, well, you can't check that the derivative equals zero at x equals zero because the derivative isn't defined there. But by taking some limits, you can see that this tangent line will even off as you go to zero from both sides. So like I said before, if you guys have any other examples of jump discontinuities that appear without piecewise functions, make sure and maybe post them in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.